Before I start this video discussing the top 5 best comic characters of the 1940s, I need to address a mistake I made in my first video focusing on the 1930s. For some strange reason I can't explain, I failed to mention the character of The Shadow, created by Walter B. Gibson and published by Street and Smith Publications. I wouldn't have included him on my actual list, but I should have said something about the character in my honorable mentions section, and for that I do apologize. The Shadow was one of the more popular pulp icons in 1930s America, and was very influential to the superhero genre, especially Batman. Now that all that is cleared up, here's my video on the 1940s. Enjoy! Now that comic books were firmly established within mainstream media and popular culture, the 1940s saw even more of a boom, especially in the superhero genre. These types of characters were popping up everywhere as comic book companies seek to cash in on this newfound craze. The looming threat of World War II in Europe for the first half of the decade caused some corners of the medium to dip into the realm of propaganda unfortunately, which did hold it back a fair bit. Comics were trying to uplift morale, rally troops, and sell war bonds among other things. Today, I'll be counting down my picks for the top 5 best characters to come out of comics in the 1940s decade. If I miss any of your favorites, or ones you believe should have been on here, be sure to leave them in the comments section down below. Number 5. Robin, Dick Grayson 1940 saw the first appearance of Batman's sidekick Robin, the Boy Wonder, in that April's Detective Comics number 38, a little over a year after Batman's official debut. It was the very first incarnation of the character named Dick Grayson, who shared a very similar backstory to that of Bruce Wayne, with both his parents, members of the acrobatic family, the Flying Graysons, murdered by a gangster named Tony Zuko, after he sabotaged their trapeze ropes at the circus they performed in. Batman and Robin are simply iconic, instantly recognizable to anyone young and old. Without Robin making up the second half of the dynamic duo, and everything the two accomplished together over the years, I don't know where the superhero genre would be at today. Dick Grayson would eventually grow older and out from behind the shadow of the Dark Knight, becoming his own form of crime fighter named Nightwing. But this wouldn't happen until the 1980s, and in my opinion, despite how cool Nightwing may be, his time as Robin will always overshadow his time as Nightwing in terms of significance and impact. Dick Grayson's Robin is one of the most memorable and influential characters in comic book history. I mean, he started the classic sidekick trope. Number 4. Aquaman this character has evolved quite a lot over the years because DC has had a lot of difficulty maintaining his appeal among mainstream audiences. For the longest time, he was viewed as a joke due to his countless kid-friendly animated appearances, riding seahorses and the like. It also didn't help that the only power that was usually on display was his ability to talk to fish, and that's about it. Thankfully, in recent years, Aquaman has been breaking ground, and I find a lot of new fans making their way to his stories. I think a lot of it has to do with his recent incarnations in DC's New 52 and Rebirth continuities, that have really built the character from the ground up again, and I recommend anyone curious about Aquaman to check them out, because many of them are pretty great. Debuting in 1941, Aquaman is a hero that has a strong and unwavering moral compass, who acts as king of the underwater nation of Atlantis. He seeks to bring peace to his city and strengthen the relationship between his people and humans, despite all the crazy schemes that have happened trying to prevent that. With both Atlantean and human blood, he acts as the link between the two worlds. He may have been a silly idea at first, but I think Aquaman has become one of the true greats of superheroism. Number 3. Captain America Captain America has come a long way since his early days in comics, when he was nothing more than shallow propaganda. Regardless of this character's backstory and how well written or drawn the stories were by his creators Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, he debuted during the height of World War II, and wearing an American flag as a costume, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize what the purpose of these comics really were. Back then, Captain America was published by Timely Comics, which would then be rebranded as Atlas Comics and then later, Marvel. 
Captain America was really the first major superhero by the publisher, or at least the first one that went the distance. However, I don't think the character really hit his stride until his revival in 1964 with Avengers number 4. This is when Captain America truly began in my opinion. All the World War II stuff is throwaway now, because many of it has not aged very well, it's offensive to modern audiences, and can easily be told in much less tasteless ways, with simple flashbacks in today's comics. Anyways, Captain America has become a staple superhero of Marvel Comics and one of the brand's biggest draws, mostly influenced by his success in the Marvel Cinematic Universe of films now. Despite his patriotic costume and mindset, and trusty shield bearing the symbol of America, the old stars and stripes, he represents so much more than that. Captain America is the everyman turned extraordinary. He fights for the little guy and stands up to bullies of all kinds. Number 2. The Joker Batman's arch nemesis and Gotham's Clown Prince of Crime, who debuted in Batman No. 1 in April of 1940, with an appearance modeled after Conrad Veidt's character, Gwynplaine from the 1928 silent film, The Man Who Laughs. For decades, the Joker has been one of the most popular characters in all of DC Comics, and one of the most beloved supervillains in the entire genre. His unpredictable nature and want to cause chaos makes him a force to be reckoned with in almost every depiction we've seen of him. Despite this, my relationship with this character has evolved a lot over time. While I think he's the greatest villain ever conceived in comic books, he isn't my personal favorite, nor do I enjoy him as much as I used to. Don't get me wrong, in the versions I do enjoy like Mark Hamill's from Batman the Animated Series, Jack Nicholson's from the 1989 Batman film, and Heath Ledger's from The Dark Knight, just to name a few, I do find this character's popularity doing more harm than good to many Batman stories. DC seems to force him into too many as of late due to popular demand, but I think too much of anything is a bad thing, regardless of how subjectively good it is to begin with. I still love this character, and like I said, he's probably the best supervillain there is. However, when I was younger, everything he seemed to touch turned to gold. Now, not so much. I would say more about the Joker here, but maybe I'll leave that for a future revamped supervillain breakdown or something. Let's move on to the honorable mentions. Okay, so I've got a lot of honorable mentions here because a lot of iconic characters made their debuts in the 1940s, and have remained major fixtures of the comic book and superhero genre, even today. I'll try to list them by year if I can. We have Catwoman, one of the greatest femme fatales, the first incarnation of Clayface, Basil Carlo, the sorcerer, Doctor Fate, the Jay Garrick Flash, the early stages of a character that would become much greater later on down the road, and the immensely powerful Spectre, who gives evildoers their just desserts. All these characters debuted in 1940. Then we have Archie Andrews, Green Arrow, The Penguin, Plastic Man, Ares, The Red Skull, and one of my personal favorites, The Scarecrow, from 1941. One of Batman's greatest adversaries, Two-Face, would make his appearance in 1942, one of Superman's iconic foes, Mr. Mixius Pitlick, in 1944, and finally, Black Adam from Captain Marvel, first appearing in 1945. I also want to bring up the Justice Society of America, which debuted in late 1940 and was the spiritual predecessor and inspiration for DC's staple superhero faction, the Justice League, which would appear in 1960. I told myself before I began this series that I wanted to focus on individual characters and not teams, but Justice League, as well as one other which will come later, are the only exceptions, and they will only be featured in the honorable mention sections and not the main lists. And the number one greatest comic character to come out of the 1940s is Wonder Woman, the third of DC's Trinity. So this might be a bit of a controversial or unpopular choice, I don't really know, but my pick for the best and most influential comic character of the 1940s would have to be that of Wonder Woman, who debuted in All-Star Comics No. 8 in October of 1941. Though her creator, psychologist and inventor William Moulton Marston is known for his polynamorous relationship with two women who both had children with him while all three lived together, and the comics featuring Wonder Woman in the 1940s left a lot to be desired, usually depicting themes related to love, submission, and bondage, 
I do still believe the impact this character has had over time, and the influence she has had on women all around the world, is what truly cements Wonder Woman as one of the biggest legends in the comic book industry. Unfortunately, much like Captain America, I find this character's early years to be a bit tainted due to the strong emphasis on stories set during World War II. Many of them are now outdated and in some instances are bordering on propaganda, though it's much more tame and less obvious compared to that of Captain America's stories, at least in my opinion. Since her inception, Wonder Woman has been a symbol of strength, heroism, and an inspiration for feminists everywhere. I admit, extreme feminism can be annoying because quite frankly, the world needs both sexes to function, for some reason people seem to forget that, but if you push that aside for one second and relax, then you would have to agree that Wonder Woman is by far one of the best DC characters ever conceived, and one of the greatest comic book characters of all time. This has been Nerdgasm, and that concludes my look at the 1940s. Did I miss any characters you would have put on this list? Make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of all future content, and stay tuned if you're thirsty for more. Until next time, take care.